right, this we'll get started here. This is Kent with Cleaver Farm and Home, and we're happy to have Dr. Clay Elliott today to discuss about sheep and goats and uh, what's going on right now with the process of them lambing and kidding. Uh, we also have Bud Meredith. Uh, you won't be able to see him, but you'll be able to hear him. Uh, with Perina, he's with us here today. Uh, Clay, we're going to turn it over to you, and and like I say at the end, we'll just do a little bit about exclusive dog food at the end. But we'll turn it over to Clay and let you have have it, sir. All right. Well, I I'm glad everyone is uh, tuned in here, and hopefully we can share some information with you that you you'll find helpful and useful. So. Um, one of the things I, I, I would like to just talk to you folks about is really what's going on right now. Um, this time of year, we, we are hopefully either knee deep in lambing and kidding, or we are certainly beginning to think about it because it's right around the corner. And with that being said, the nutritional requirements for those females is, is pretty important and we need to make sure that we're at least meeting it. Um, and, and, and those gals right now, um, you know, the last, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks uh, of gestation is, is very critical because those girls, man, those babies are growing so rapidly, um, nearly 75% of fetal growth happens, um, in the last trimester. And so the last couple of weeks, uh, Boy, those babies are pulling a lot of calcium, an awful lot of energy from mom. And so if, um, if your females are losing weight um, through gestation or especially at the end of gestation, I can assure you that uh, lambing and kidding season will not be very much fun because you're gonna be spending an awful lot of time um, trying to take care of weak lambs, weak uh, kids, um, malpresentations, um, ewes that aren't wanting to push, ewes that aren't dilating correctly. Um, and there's just a list of, of problems that occur if we don't have those gals in at least ample body condition. Um, and also, one thing that I will stress to you and any of you folks that, that follow me on Facebook, you'll know that I, I push mineral constantly. and the Purina goat mineral for the goats, the, the wind and rain sheep mineral this time of year for the sheep is, is so critical. And both of those minerals are <clears throat> a high calcium mineral and, and calcium plays such a role uh, at parturition time in terms of allowing enough uh, calcium to come through for cervical dilation. Um, especially in the goat business. Uh, those of you that have some boar goats, you'll know that those gals are synonymous for not dilating uh, correctly or uh, really allowing that cervical channel to, to open up and, and the birth canal opened up enough for those kids to pass. And the same thing happens in ewes too, but uh, boy, calcium plays a huge role in that. Um, some other things that calcium does is uh, boy, it helps reduce the onset of uh, milk fever. That reduces the onset of, of just calcium deficiency. And if those gals don't have enough calcium when it comes, you know, the end of gestation or the first part of parturition, why they'll go down. Those babies are pulling that calcium from mom for bone growth. And if she doesn't have enough being supplemented to her, she'll go down. And as soon as she goes down, um, they don't get back up without help, without calcium uh, being supplemented. And then it very quickly turns into ketosis, which is a negative energy balance. Um, those gals obviously don't get up and, and eat. It hurts. They, they can't get themselves back up. So they're missing out on, on feed and nutrition. And so very quickly we have a negative energy balance and then mom gets pretty weak. And uh, if mom's not got enough energy, what do you think's happening to those babies inside of her? They obviously don't have enough either. And so, boy, at that point, we've got a mess on our hands. You're going to have uh, lambs that are, are, if you can't, lambs and goats, you, you either can't get out. Um, you're going to have to reach in there and pull them. 
uh, mom maybe doesn't dilate like she's supposed to. Anyway, there's an array of issues that if we don't supply enough calcium, that boy, gestation and parturition become really ugly really fast. And, and it's real simple. It, you just need to get those gals on high calcium mineral and that's where the wind and rain mineral and the Purina goat mineral comes in. Both of those minerals uh, have a chelated Avela, Zinpro Avela pack in them uh, for zinc, manganese, cobalt, and then on the goat side, they have Avela copper as well, as goats require copper and sheep do not. So that, uh, that's pretty important stuff. I would always say, um, don't if you're gonna skimp, don't skimp on mineral. And, and we all know that mineral is relatively costly when you go buy it per bag. But if you think about it, those those does are only eating a third of an ounce to a half an ounce per head per day. And those ewes are eating about an ounce per head per day. So if you wanna talk about uh, penciling that stuff out and, and what it's costing per day, it, it's pretty minute, okay? so. So please don't skimp on mineral. If you're gonna, if you think things are, are a little tight, why that's not the thing to, to uh, drop the ball on. Now, obviously we want you to, to keep those gals in a body condition score of minimum of a two and a half, but really and truly this time of year when they're getting ready to lamb or kid, a body condition score three or maybe even slightly better than that is a good it's a good place to be. Now, I'm not suggesting we want those gals to be obese because uh, we will run into a lot of problems relative to prolapse uh, rectally and both, uh, and also the uterine prolapse. So I'm not, I'm not telling you we want them body condition score five. We don't want them obese. We need them to be a three, three and a half because they're going to milk down. When they start to lactating, those gals are gonna get thinner. And there's just, we, we really can't supply um, enough pounds per head of feed to keep their body condition right. So that's where we need to utilize those supplements that have a little extra fat in them. Um, you know, and that's where the, the Accuration High Fat Tub comes in. And I absolutely love that product. That's a 25 protein, but more importantly, it's a 10 fat. And those gals will consume, they're supposed to consume about a pound per head per day of that. Um, and that is a, a product that can supply tremendous energy in a small uh, consumption, okay, a small level of consumption. Now, I also want you to, get to think about how, why that tub was designed. It was actually designed to be a supplemental source of nutrition for ewes and does that were out on pasture. And, and it does a great job of that, but they're out on pasture, okay? And, and it works awesome. And they're gonna consume a pound or less of that per head per day. But what do you suppose happens when we put that molasses-based tub inside of a pen where those gals have access to that 24 seven and they're only a few feet away from them? or you put it inside the barn where they where they lay down and, and rest or sleep and or they can get up and take two steps and stick their head in that tub, overconsumption is gonna occur and you're gonna get some soft stool. And so if, if you want, if you're okay with that, great. They're getting a tremendous amount of energy. If that's a, uh, a problem to you, then you need to be able to move that tub outside that loafing area and move it to the end of the pen or the other side of the, the area where they're at so that they actually have to get up and move and work to get it to some degree instead of stand up and, and uh, take a couple of steps to drop their head in the bucket. So anyway, just some, just some things to think about. Um, the, uh, well, you know, there's, there's, with this time of year, we've got those baby lambs that are coming and we want, obviously we want those things, regardless if you're a commercial producer um, or a, a show lamb type person, it, it really doesn't matter that the goal of creep feed for those babies is to get them on feed quickly and get them started and get them growing. Because the more growth, uh, the more bloom, et cetera, that we can get on them, they're, they're more valuable. 
and we don't want to have as very many wasted days in terms of growth and performance. But I also want to want to talk to you and remind you that 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 rumen on those goats and those baby lambs does not fully develop until about week four. Okay. And if you think about how the lactation curve is on those mamas, why they begin to drop production about week five, okay, week four and a half to week five. So milk, milk production decreases. And at that point, that's when the, the rumen starts to kick in and starts to become fully developed. And that's when those babies will start hitting that creep feed. And that's obviously what we want. And it's kind of interesting how a lot of those creep feeds are designed for animals that are, you know, four weeks of age, uh, fits just right, right with that, with the rumen being functional and it fits with mom's lactation curve. So as milk production comes down, well, that's when we want to have uh, creep feed involved. And, you know, folks will tell you, everybody's got their own idea relative to creep feed. Uh, whether it needs to be a 19 or a 20% or a 15 or a 16% and a, or a 2% fat, a, a 5 or 6% fat. Does it need to be pelleted? Does it need to be textured? You know, there's all kinds of questions and all kinds of thoughts. And, and I would say that uh, everybody knows their animals and their and their flock and their goat herd the very best. And, and I, I can tell you that uh, when we were uh, trying to, when we're trying to get baby lambs to bloom up and, and get going while we pushed for the uh, 15 or the 16 percent, 50 percent Purina lamb and you with a, a four fat or the Delta lamb and you that was a 16 protein, four and a half fat. And, and the reason why we uh, utilize those products is because, first of all, they were conven uh, convenient. They were easy to get their, get my hands on. And I think that's one of the most important things relative to any kind of a creep feed is make sure you can get it fresh and make sure you can get your hands on it um, and not have to be changing creep feeds, etc. If you can get um, whatever whatever the stores have that you're pulling from, that's what you should use as a creep feed, ideally, especially from a commercial standpoint. I know that uh, cleavers run a 19% that's uh, floor stocked in St. Joe to 19 protein, 2% fat for, for sheep, uh, for baby lambs. And, uh, you know, that's a product that's medicated with Bovitec for, for uh, uh, <laughs> coccidiosis, I'm sorry, for coccidiosis and, and uh, you know, I like Bovitec. Those other products that I mentioned were were all medicated with Decox. I, I, I'm a firm believer in those ionophores. If we can get them, I like them. From the goat standpoint, Remensin works tremendous uh, on coccidiosis. So, and if you can get products like that uh, for your creek feeding schedule, man, that's that's the way to go. Get it get them in, get them fed, get them started. Now, here's the other thing that we've learned with some research here at Purina, and that is if we can feed mom a product that uh, those babies can eat or they will eat, we've learned that they'll go on feed on average of four, those baby lambs will get on feed on average to four to four and a half days earlier than they will if we're feeding mom a different type of feed. And so if you can feed mom, maybe this same 19% after she's lambed and you've kind of put her out in the mixing pen with the other, with some other ewes and babies, why feed those gals that Accuration tub and give them uh, this 19% uh, uh, product that cleavers have in stock and let mom eat that. The babies will always stick their head in that feeder with mom because they're going to emulate whatever mom does. They're learning from her every day. And so if she's eating it, why they're going to eat it. And then if you were to happen to put that same feed in that creek feeder, well, guess what? Those babies are going to go to that quicker. 
versus what what we learned is in a in a study at my house is that we fed those ewes in one group a uh, just a corn uh, mix uh, a ewe feed that had whole corn and some pellets etc and then we in the other pen we had them on uh, a pelleted feed that was the same as what mom uh, that mom and then we put that into their creep feeder and that's when we learned that for roughly four days uh, they'll get on feed quicker but in the other pen why we had mom on those on that you mix with whole corn and then we put the creep feed uh, the same creep feed in the feeder and it took those lambs significantly longer to get on on creep so anyway just some just some information just some thoughts for you folks to to uh, digest and kind of contemplate and that that's that, we found that to work the same in goats too as it does with with ewes and lambs so Anyway, if you can supplement mom with, with some kind of a feed that you can put in that creep feeder for those babies, you'll get them off to a quicker start. So good information there that we learned uh, many years ago here at Purina. So the other thing that we learned is if we could uh, supplement fat to those ewes like is in that AccuAction tub, why that actually uh, will increase the milk fat in mom's milk now, if we can increase milk fat in those uh, in what those babies are getting what do you suppose happens to them Why, they'll get off to a quicker start they'll grow faster they'll get more bloom and fat on them so those are a couple of tidbits that uh, man i i found that to be real important in what we do here relative to the to the sheep business and um, we've also dove into uh, a little set of spanish does that we've got here at the farm and I tell you what uh, the reason why I got those was so that I could feel better about the understanding of the nutrition that is needed and necessary from the goat standpoint and and I can tell you from a textbook and all that kind of stuff exactly what they need and what I've learned from the sheep business and being in that for 35 years but you know I got some goats so that I could learn some things about them and, and they're a little bit different breed uh, of creature. Um, these Spanish does that I got when I got them, they come in off pasture. They've never seen feed before. Uh, and so they wouldn't even come to the bunk when I dumped feed in there. And so, well, that was pretty interesting. I, I finally got those gals broke to a, to a feed bunk and we're starting to kit those right now. And, but I'll tell you, one of the things that I've learned is I actually wanted these things in here for a little bit of a research project so I could learn some things about copper uh, on goats and really deficiency, obviously, on goats and not so much, you know, copper toxicity. But uh, I got them in here, um, oh, in June of, of summer, and I fed those gals sheep feed. I've had them on sheep feed constantly, and I have not supplied any mineral to them. And I know you guys are thinking, well, gosh, that's dumb for the nutritionist not to do that. Well, I'll tell you what I wanted to know is I wanted to know how long it would take those goats to become copper deficient. And I figured that out. Those gals are copper deficient right now. It has taken them roughly uh, six months and the way I know they're copper deficient is because their hair color has turned brown instead of black, right? That's, that's the, one of the first indications. Well, guess what else I learned with my pregnant does being copper deficient? Those gals have sloughed their kids in some cases. Okay, they've aborted. Now, for those of you who don't use mineral I can tell you firsthand that there are repercussions and they require copper for reproduction, for gestation. And so uh, we've designed this Purina goat mineral as hopefully one of the very premier goat minerals in the entire industry. And we've used, as I said, that, that um, 
Vela zinc, uh, copper, cobalt, manganese in there help us with, with reproduction. And the reason that we we chose the Avelas uh, from Zenpro is because those are, are more bioavailable. And what that means is those sheep and goats that are on a product like that, they actually can absorb and use that mineral instead of excreting it. They're using a much higher percentage of a chelate than just a, a you know a, a loose mineral that is uh, not chelated. Okay, so that's uh, that's one of the neat things. And so back to my goat story, guys. I have uh, obviously started those gals on goat feed and Purina goat mineral, and now my uh, my goal is to figure out okay how long does it take for me to get those gals caught back up and i don't know what that answer is but i'm going to guess it's going to take every bit as long as it did to make them deficient maybe longer but the good part about this purina goat mineral is 2500 parts per million so it's very high in copper and it's also um, very bioavailable so maybe i can cut that deal down but um, those are those are my thoughts those are kind of some experimentation that i've got here because I, I really wanted to know just a little more and there I didn't find very much research out there on goats and copper deficiency and, and maybe all of the things that it, uh, it, you know, the problems that it caused. So anyway, that's kind of some information, um, information sharing some things that we got going here um, relative to things going at the research farm. You know, we've got a 1200 acre research facility in Grace Summit, Missouri. And on that uh, on that farm, we've got a group of uh, commercial ewes. There's about 45 commercial ewes up there that are Dorset and Polypay influenced. And we have done uh, palatability studies with them. We have done intake studies with them on mineral and on other uh, feeds and, and uh, nutrition sources that we've got. Uh, we've got some goats in there that we're working on uh, uh, some immune support supplementation. We've got uh, some lambs in there, some dorper lambs that we're working on a cough suppressant type deal uh, for those ewes and those lambs. Uh, in summertime, it really seems like that they get to coughing and then Obviously, they, they rectally prolapse, and then you've got issues more than you want to deal with. And so we, we're we working on some things that we think are really, really neat here at Purina and at a research farm. And then, uh, you know, there'll be, we've got some other things coming. Uh, Bud Merrith asked me before we got started, what, what do we got coming new? And we're working on an immune uh, supplement tub for young lambs or for ewes, whatever. And then it's going to double as a breeder tub. It's got all kinds of um, immune supplement, all kinds of minerals, all kinds of uh, extras to help us reproductively to get a higher percent of lambs, uh, get them to conceive, get those used to conceive on their first service. Um, also, for those of you that are interested in AI and embryo transfer, we we sure think that it can have an impact on on number of embryos, uh, retaining embryos and recips, etc. So we're doing we're we're doing some pretty cool research here. Um, it, we we sure feel like that uh, the things that we're doing have some application relative to what's going on out there for you folks. And we're trying to to work on some things for some hoof health. We're we're trying to work on. Uh, uh, long-term uh, potential uh, tub or a block for a, a wormer delivery for those goats and those ewes that are out on on pasture and so anyway we are trying very hard to be very relevant to what's going on in the world and try to supply some things for you folks that are out there to live in it each and every day so with that being said uh I'm going to turn this thing back to you, Kent, and let you uh, talk to him about some exclusive. If you guys have questions for me, why 
I'll be glad to answer them um, here in a little bit, or you can obviously uh, send them to Bud Merritt and let him answer them. And if he's got any sna uh, snags, why he can uh, send them on to me. So I'll be glad to help you any way I can. Hey, Thank Clay, you all. Clay, we got a question for you. Um, so a producer has 50 head or more of sheep or goats. How does a trial, feeding trial, pay off for them? What are they going to gain oh. out of that? Yeah, great question. So, so uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Kent. We we have initiated a uh, feeding uh, a feeding trial uh, competition for our sales folks, and the goal is for us to get more data into our archives so that we can share that data and, and help folks to learn and understand what each of these products do with some real data that was compiled by their neighbors or maybe the guy down the road or the family down the road so anyway that's uh, kind of the idea now what do you gain by it why the i guess the first thing is you will get a return on your investment on the feed if you send the data um, and let the let our salesperson collect that data and submit it for us to evaluate and use and so you'll get a, a, a rebate that's sent back to the store sent right back to cleavers and they will pass that on to you as a deduction uh, on your on your next feed or whatever so in some cases it, it could be up to five hundred dollars based upon like the mineral on uh, like this, just the supplemental feeds, the Delta Lamb and U, the Purina Lamb and U 15, the tubs, all of those would have a $250 um, payment back after we get the data. So anyway, the plus you get to, to understand exactly how those products are working. You have firsthand data from your own herd or flock relative to what it did for you. And, and so, our goal is to, to show you, um, you know, our motto is uh, a difference you can see. And so we would like to, to show you the difference in these products and, and what they actually do with real data from your, your animals to kind of prove to you what's going on. So that's the idea. Good question. Uh, another question we had is, and I don't know, if, I can't remember if we covered it or not, was what what should we do in this time of year with the rams and billies getting ready to go in? Oh, yeah, good question. I'm glad you brought that up. What are we doing with the bucks and billies right now? Those those guys should be put up, right? We, we hope they're locked up in a pen somewhere where they're not tormenting the ewes. They don't need to be out there running with your does and ewes right now with them lambing. And the reason I tell you that is because those bucks will kill those babies they'll they'll step on them they'll stomp them they just a lot of cases that you just don't want them out there and then plus when you're going out there to to gather babies or or help those use why you don't need one of them old big bucks in your hip pocket helping you out because those sun bucks will hurt you bad but anyway relative to nutrition right now those things i hope are put up you got them on uh, all the fresh water they can they can handle um we use the 15% a, a, uh, Purina uh, lamb and you or the Delta lamb and you, or you could use a higher percent protein like that 19%. But I will tell you the reason why we always use the lower protein on those bucks, and it could be a show feed. I mean, we've, we've used the, um, you know, a 15 or an 18% show feed on our bucks before, but I, I like... 15 or 16 and the reason for that is because if you increase uh, protein on those bucks or those billy goats you can get some pizzle rot going on and that's a calcification kind of on their sheath and and uh, I tell you when when they extend it will absolutely tear up uh, their penis when it's extended and, and so you don't want to have that extra calcification and that junk hanging around on their sheets so lower protein will help you and prevent that but those bucks need to be in an ample a moderate body condition we if you're using um, 
like a, a, a show feed or you're using a, uh, a feed that has a mineral pack in it, that's traditionally enough mineral for those bucks. We, we do not free choice our bucks with mineral. And the reason for that is because uh, higher levels of calcium and, and a lot kind of stuff can allow some, to some buildup. We could potentially see uh, a little more uh, urinary calculi in those bucks. And so we traditionally don't get too carried away with a mineral program. We assume and we're hoping that our our mineral pack that's in the feed is adequate for those bucks and traditionally I know from our standpoint it's ample and adequate for those bucks that are you know just sitting around so that's what I would do um, do not get them fat you need to monitor their body condition and do not get those bucks over a three uh, one being thin, five being obese, and a two and a half is ideal for those bucks just kind of hanging around. And so, you know, that means maybe a pound to a pound and a half of that feed per head per day and plenty of just grass hay. Uh, Bermuda grass hay is what we use here. I would not supply those bucks with alfalfa. Again, you'll run into some calcium to phosphorus issues and potentially get some urinary calculi going on so um, and you want to take care of your bucks you want to keep their hooves trimmed you want to keep uh, keep them out of foot rot and those types of issues but man don't forget about them but in the same token don't give them all the love in the world because you need those guys to be in the proper body condition to go to work for you when it's time so good question okay we have one more uh, question was uh, when do you typically how many if you go off a of days you go off a of weight when you wean you know what I traditionally go off a of days that's a good question too and um, it's traditionally you know uh, two months right around there you know if we're a, a week uh, late two weeks late why so be it but roughly eight eight weeks or uh, 60 days is kind of our, our, our time frame for weaning on on both species. So great question. And then relative to that, and which leads to another one, how do we dry those ewes up? And uh, I tell you what, drying those ewes up, we talked about lactation decreases at about week five. And traditionally about week seven, man, we take the extra grain away from them. We take for feeding those ewes and does alfalfa while we move them to a grass hay. We take away the extra supplement. We take away those tubs and let those gals decrease milk production and, and allow them to start drying up even quicker. Leave the lambs on them, let them eat rough, rough hay and uh, no supplementation, plenty of water. And then, you know, traditionally, uh, you know, by the time they're week eight or nine, um, we hopefully can can start to pull those lambs off without jeopardizing uh, those udders. So that's what we do. Well, I, we appreciate everything and I know you're gonna stand by while we do a little bit on exclusive dog food. Um, we'll, if we've got any more questions, we'll come back and uh, answer them in a few minutes. Um, Sounds great. We're gonna talk a little bit about exclusive. You're gonna be able to hear Bud uh, you can talk about it. You're going to be able to hear Kyle Hart, our kind of our Perina pet expert uh, here at the store, talk about it. Um, so I'm kind of just, you won't be able to see him because we're, you know, being apart a little bit here, but you'll be able to hear him. And uh, we'll start off here with Bud. You've been talking a little bit about exclusive. Well, Kent, uh, this time of year, we've just come through the holidays and uh, a lot of people may have uh, gotten puppies as Christmas gifts and things like that. So I thought we would touch base just briefly on, um, on uh, puppy foods and the importance of, uh, of taking good care of those little guys. And uh, the reason we have formulas designed to support the growth phases of puppies is uh, this life stage has different nutrient requirements compared to an adult. As the, uh, as the puppy grows, they need a higher daily intake of specific amino acids, which is what makes up proteins, vitamins, and minerals to uh, support healthy development. 
their stomachs are so small that we have to develop formulas that are higher of these nutrients and uh, higher per calorie in the diet. So this concentrated nutrition allows these little small stomachs to consume the right amount of these nutrients at every meal. Uh, within uh, our family of pet food products, uh, we have puppy formulas and some that are uh, formulated as all life stages. And uh, these all life stages uh, will meet the nutritional needs of growing puppies as well. So we have a red flannel line and as well as an exclusive signature line that will meet the puppy's specific needs. So uh, Cleavers handles a full line of exclusive and red flannel products and have those available. And um, one of the neat things for pet puppy owners is you guys have a frequent purchase program. And you want to tell them how that works? Kyle, you want to go ahead and tell them? So the frequent purchaser program works as uh, you, it's a buy eight, get one free. Uh, you uh, you essentially just buy your eight bags and you'll get a free bag. It may not seem like a lot, but uh, you, you've got a growing puppy. And if you got more than one uh, dog, it really adds up. So what we do is we keep track of it on a card for you. So when, every time you purchase, we fill out the card uh, and we'll keep track of it for you as you purchase throughout the year. So it's usually, it comes out about the end of, like I say, four bucks off a bag by the time you get that free one. So it, it's a, the products are exceptionally well. Um, how you want to say, I was one of them guys that was maybe not the truest believer of it, but I put our dog, we had an older dog, uh, we put it on the senior. Um, in one week, that dog started to act more like himself. He was laying around all the time and now he is up running. Now he's not acting like a puppy, but he wants to chase the ball again. Uh, that was something uh, that really right off the bat, uh, they even got a coat has come back shinier and now my daughter wants to show it in 4-H. Uh, so it's come a long ways on that puppy, on that uh, senior dog food. Um, anything else you got, bud? Oh, the comfort care on the stomach. Uh, it's got prebiotics and probiotics in it. Uh, it works really well on uh, digestion in the dogs. It's, it's, it does a tremendous amount of help. That is correct. It's got some fermentable fibers that uh, keep the stomach really stable. Uh, we, we use some chicory root, some yeast extracts in there. and uh, it's, it's, The digestive system is critical. About 70% Kent, of, a, of a dog's immune system comes out of what it generates uh, within that uh, uh, their digestive system. So uh, it, it's not only critical for keeping their stomachs so they don't uh, have diarrhea and things like that, upset stomachs, but it's, it's important for their immune system as well. So one of the things you'll notice at Cleaver's when you come in lately, uh, we're moving the dog food inside. Uh, it's been outside in the feed room. Uh, there'll be one to two bags of each one on the shelf, but don't worry, we have half pallets and pallets of them in the back. So whether you want one or 10 or 40, we have them. So don't be afraid. If you only see one on there. We have them in the back. Uh, we're always ready to go for you on that. Uh, the exclusive cat, that's been a one that's taken off on us too. Uh, shinier coats, uh, older cats that get having problems with weight gain, it, it's done a tremendous job on them too. Uh, we have a couple employees here that have fed the large breed puppy. Uh, we've had some that have fed uh, the small puppy. So you can ask around uh, and you'll, you'll get stories from all of us how exclusive has helped our animals. Is there anything you'd like to add, Kyle? Um, on the large breed side, we do have uh, a large breed formula specialized for um, uh, larger breeds, Great Pyrenees, German Shepherds, uh, Huskies, dogs like that. And then we also have a formula that goes into the uh, large breed adult uh, once they get older. So pretty much uh, don't be afraid to stop uh, in store. We'd be love to talk to you about the dog food. Um, Clay, is there anything else you'd like to add on anything on sheep or anything? <laughs> um, not that I'm aware of, uh, unless I've specifically missed something. If you got questions, why please. But 
pass those along, but we, we sure appreciate those of you that are using our products. Uh, I hope you found those to be useful and beneficial to your herd and your flock. Um, I know that we designed those products with, with uh, our, our sheep right here in mind because I, I know that my wife and I have had our fair share of problems throughout the years. And so we designed products that would help us. And in the meantime, we, um, we believe that you folks probably have seen some of the same issues and could utilize, uh, utilize the products as well. And so that's one thing I can tell you is that our products are designed by people who are in the business. So, and we appreciate your business. Uh, we do have one more question. Clay, on the creep feeding, uh, you mentioned uh, about four weeks they need to be on the creep feed because mama's milk production is going down by week five. Uh, do they want to wait until week four to start them on the creep feed or should they? Oh, that's a great question too. We, we actually um, put the creep feed out about roughly week two to three just because those babies will start nibbling. Um, they're, they're really not they're not going to eat a bunch. They're really not able to, to digest it and utilize it. But you know, I know that a lot of folks sure think, wow, those, those lambs are on creek feed by the end of their first week of, of life. And yeah, they, they could be picking around at it. They could actually stick their head in and, and chew it up and, and all that kind of stuff. But they're, they're really not able to utilize it. But yes, put it out, get it out there so that they're used to it. They're used to that creek feeder. And then, like I say, make sure that uh, you're feeding mom the same thing if you want to get them on the creep real quick. So, absolutely. Good question. Well, hey, for right now, that's all the questions we've gotten in. Uh, we sure appreciate you being with us. And like I say, we'll, this will be on Facebook. And then we'll a uh, week or two, we'll have this moved over to our YouTube, YouTube page. Uh, so if you missed it or heard about it, you can go back and watch it on there. And we sure appreciate you. Very good. Thank you all. Thanks, Clay.